Welcome to Aviation World. Welcome to this presentation covering the hydraulic system on the A320 series aircraft. The aircraft has three continuously operating hydraulic systems. They are designated the green, blue, and yellow systems. Each system operates independently. There is no possibility of fluid transfer from one system to another. These systems function at a normal operating pressure of approximately 3,000 psi. To provide additional redundancy, each system is provided with at least two pressure sources, including engine-driven pumps, electric pumps, a ram air turbine, or RAT, and a power transfer unit, or PTU. Each hydraulic system includes a reservoir for fluid storage and recirculation. To prevent pump cavitation, the reservoir is automatically pressurized by the aircraft's pneumatic system. Normally, high pressure air from engine one pressurizes the hydraulic reservoirs automatically. If the bleed air pressure is too low, the system takes bleed air pressure from the cross bleed duct. Let's first take a look at the green hydraulic system. A fire shutoff valve is positioned upstream of the engine driven pump, enabling the crew to stop the flow of hydraulic fluid to the engine should an engine fire occur. The shutoff valve is closed using the engine one fire push button. The primary pressure source for the green system is a hydraulic pump driven by engine one. The green system includes an accumulator that helps maintain constant pressure by covering transient demands during normal operations. Unlike other components discussed, the green accumulator can neither be monitored nor controlled from the cockpit. This is the only time it will be mentioned. A backup source of pressure for the green system is the PTU. It is bidirectional and enables the yellow system to pressurize the green system or the green system to pressurize the yellow system. The PTU activates automatically if the differential pressure between the green and yellow systems is greater than 500 PSI. The PTU pressurizes the system with the lower pressure. The yellow system includes a reservoir, fire valve, engine driven pump driven by engine two, and an accumulator all of which function the same as those in the green system. An additional backup source of pressure for the yellow system is an electric pump, which can be controlled from the cockpit. The electric pump is also used when operating cargo doors. While the electric pump is operating the cargo doors, the only other yellow system devices that can operate are braking and engine to reverse. The yellow system also includes a hand pump, which can be used to provide pressure to operate the cargo doors if the yellow system's electric pump fails. The yellow system hand pump is located on the right side of the fuselage. Operating cargo doors using the hand pump requires two people, one to operate the pump and the second to operate the door selector located at each cargo door. The blue system includes a reservoir and an accumulator. It is unique in that its primary pressure source is an electric pump. This electric pump activates automatically after the first engine is started. A pump driven by a rat pressurizes the blue system if normal sources of electrical power are not available. The PTU cannot pressurize the blue system. The green, blue, and yellow hydraulic systems power all of the aircraft's flight controls and many other aircraft systems. Most aircraft are configured as you see here. However, some items such as nose wheel steering are different on some aircraft. This will be discussed in the differences section. If a hydraulic system malfunctions, the respective systems display displays the affected components. In this scenario, we can see which flight control surfaces are affected by a green hydraulic system failure because they are displayed in amber. Even more helpful, the status page displays a complete list of the systems and components impacted by the failure. The status page shown here is a good example. Notice the information provided with the loss of the green system. You will have more opportunities to review the status page during the abnormal operation section of this lesson. This concludes the overview section of this lesson. Here we are at controls and indicators. We're going to talk about several controls and indicators in this section. First we'll start with the hydraulic page. The hydraulic page displays the green, blue, and yellow hydraulic systems from left to right, respectively. We will now examine individual items displayed on the page, starting at the bottom with the reservoirs. The right-facing arrow indicates the fluid level. 
It is normally green and moves up and down the white vertical index to reflect changes in fluid level. The green box at the upper right of the index represents the normal fill range for hydraulic fluid. The crew will check that the hydraulic quantity is within the normal fill range during the preflight. While the hydraulics are operating in flight, it is possible for the hydraulic quantity to be less than the fill range. This is particularly true for the green system after the gear has been retracted. Advance now to retract the landing gear and observe the drop in reservoir quantity which occurs after the gear is raised. The indicator is displayed in amber if the quantity drops to within the amber low level warning box on the right side of the index. This would be accompanied by an ECAM caution message. Low air pressure is displayed in amber and an ECAM message is displayed if reservoir air pressure drops below normal. Overheat is displayed in amber and an ECAM message is displayed if the hydraulic fluid temperature is above normal. The fire valves in the green and yellow systems are displayed inline green when the valve is open, in other words, not fully closed. Crossline amber indicates the fire valve is fully closed. In this example, engine 2 has been shut down using the engine 2 fire push button. The engine shutdown is also indicated by the amber 2. The engine numbers are normally white. They are displayed in amber when an engine is not running. One additional point about the fire valves. From this ECAM depiction, it would appear that with the fire valve closed, hydraulic fluid cannot flow beyond that point. In reality, that is not true. If the fire valve is closed, hydraulic fluid is allowed to bypass the engine. This relationship is simply not displayed on the hydraulic page. The fluid is available for another pressure source, for example the PTU or electric pump, to use in order to pressurize the system. Notice that the yellow system engine driven pump now has an amber low indication. This is because fluid is no longer flowing to the engine driven pump. Low is also displayed if the pump is not performing properly and providing low hydraulic pressure. If the pump is selected off using a push button on the overhead hydraulic panel, the indication changes to cross line amber. When the push button is in its normal on position and the pump is providing normal pressure, the indication is inline green. Notice how the PTU is currently displayed. This PTU indication shows that the PTU, using energy supplied by the green system, is now pressurizing the yellow system. Remember, no fluid is being transferred. Now let's look at some other possible PTU indications. In this example, the PTU is pressurizing the green hydraulic system. In this example, the PTU push button is in auto and the PTU is not transferring pressure. The PTU is displayed in amber if the PTU push button is off or the PTU fails its self test. A PTU self test is conducted during second engine start. A PTU fault during the self test is the only time a PTU fault message is generated. It is important to remember that the PTU is unmonitored after the self-test is complete. If the PTU fails in flight, there will be no change in the indication. It is unlikely you would be aware of a PTU failure in flight. An amber PTU indication does not always mean it has failed. It generally indicates that the PTU has been selected off. Moving on to the electric pumps, the ELEC legend is normally white for both the primary blue electric pump and the backup yellow electric pump. ELEC is displayed in amber if the pump's normal electrical power supply fails or the pump is selected off. An amber overheat is displayed if the electric pump overheats. Because of its role as a backup pressure source, the yellow system electric pump is presented in additional ways. In this example, the yellow electric pump is not operating. In this example, the yellow electric pump is on and providing normal pressure. The pump can be manually selected on using a push button on the overhead hydraulic panel. It also activates automatically during cargo door operation with the engines shut down. In that case, the pump only pressurizes a portion of the yellow system. In this example, the yellow system electric pump has been activated, either manually or automatically. 
and yellow system pressure is low. Also in this example, the PTU has been selected off by the crew. This will be discussed later in the presentation. Next, we move on to the backup pressure source for the blue system, the rat. The dropout rat is coupled to a hydraulic pump that allows the blue system to function if electrical power is lost or both engines fail. The rat deploys automatically if AC bus 1 and AC bus 2 are lost. It can also be deployed manually using a push button on the overhead panel. In addition to providing blue system pressure, the rat also provides hydraulic pressure to drive an emergency generator if necessary. The emergency generator is discussed in the electrical system lesson. In this example, the rat is in its normal stowed condition. In this example, the rat is deployed. If the rat is not available or fails, it is displayed in amber. The rat can only be stowed by maintenance personnel when the aircraft is on the ground. Finally, we come to the system labels and system pressure readings at the top of the hydraulic page. In this example, all three systems are operating at their normal pressure. If hydraulic system pressure drops below 1450 PSI, it is displayed in amber. We now move on to the hydraulic overhead panel. The hydraulic panel is located in the aft center of the overhead panel and allows the crew to control key components of the hydraulic system. It also provides a graphic depiction of the basic layout of essential system elements. The two engine driven pump push buttons, engine 1 pump and engine 2 pump, are normally on or lights out. This allows the pumps to operate when the respective engine is running. If either of these push buttons is selected off, the respective engine driven pump is deactivated. Continue for a demonstration. Notice the PTU activates automatically to pressurize the green system. The PTU push button is normally in the auto or lights out position. This allows the PTU to activate automatically if necessary. Selecting the PTU push button off deactivates the PTU. This is done in certain abnormal situations. Let's select the PTU off. The guarded blue electric pump push button is normally in the auto or lights out position. This allows for automatic activation of the blue system's primary pressure source. If AC power is available, the pump activates automatically after first engine start. If the push button is selected off, the blue electric pump is deactivated. Let's select the blue electric pump push button off. The yellow electric pump push button is normally off or lights out. With the push button off, the yellow electric pump activates automatically when a ground worker operates the cargo door. If the push button is selected on, the yellow electric pump activates. Either way, AC power must be available for the yellow electric pump to function. Let's push the yellow electric pump push button. We now move on to discuss the fault lights in the pump and PTU push buttons. The fault lights illuminate if the respective pump malfunctions and is not providing proper pressure. This is the classic example of the Airbus fault light philosophy. The fault light illuminates to assist in locating the correct push button when performing ECAM action steps. Let's select the engine 1 pump off and observe the fault light extinguish. If a pump or PTU push button is selected off, the white off light illuminates, the respective item is deactivated, and the fault light extinguishes. The pump and PTU push button fault lights also illuminate if the pumps or PTU are working fine, but other system problems require that all system pressure sources be deactivated. These problems include system reservoir overheat, system reservoir low air pressure, or system low fluid level. In this example, low air pressure in the green reservoir requires that all green system pressure sources be deactivated. Therefore, even though they have not malfunctioned, fault lights in the engine 1 pump and the PTU push buttons illuminate. Let's select these push buttons off and observe the fault lights extinguish. A reservoir overheat situation is a significant exception. During a reservoir overheat, the fault lights remain illuminated, even with the push button selected off, until the overheat condition no longer exists. Finally, we can discuss the rat. The primary purpose of the rat is to pressurize the blue system. 
The rat man on push button is used to extend the rat for hydraulic purposes only. Hydraulic pressure provided by the rat can only be used to drive an emergency generator. The rat extends automatically in flight if the AC bus 1 and AC bus 2 are lost. The purpose of the rat man on push button panel is to manually extend the rat to pressurize the blue system without activating the emergency generator. This is only required if the blue electric pump is lost and one of the other hydraulic systems has also failed. In this example, the green system has been shut down due to a reservoir overheat and the blue electric pump has also failed. The ECAM is directed that the rat be extended to pressurize the blue system. Using the rat man on push button on the hydraulic panel extends the rat to pressurize the blue system. The emergency generator will not be activated. Go ahead and lift the guard and push the rat man on push button to deploy the rat for hydraulic purposes only. The rat can be extended one of three ways. Automatically, due to a loss of AC bus 1 and 2, in that case the rat provides blue hydraulic pressure and the hydraulically driven emergency generator activates automatically. A second way for the rat to extend, by pushing the rat man on push button on the hydraulic panel. In that case, the rat only provides blue hydraulic pressure. And finally, a third way for the rat to extend, by pushing the man on push button on the emergency electrical power panel. In that case, the rat provides blue hydraulic pressure and the hydraulically driven emergency generator activates. And that concludes the controls and indicators section. In this section, we'll discuss the cruise interaction with the hydraulic system during normal operations. Because the hydraulic system is fully automatic in normal operation, most of your interaction with the system will occur during your pre-flight preparations. We'll begin our discussion with the hydraulic panel. The normal configuration of the hydraulic panel during initial cockpit preparation is lights out. Occasionally on the first flight of the day, you may see all of the fault lights illuminated in the pump and PTU push buttons during the early stages of the pre-flight. This is because of the pneumatic head pressure on the reservoirs has bled off over time. When APU bleed or another air source supplies the pneumatic system, the fault lights should extinguish. Continuing on with the pre-flight, the crew will verify the fluid levels of all three hydraulic systems using the hydraulic page. This should be accomplished when the hydraulic systems are static and not in use. Go ahead and push the hydraulic key on the ECAM control panel. Since neither engine is running, all three systems show zero pressure. The fluid level should be within the normal fill range, indicated by the green box. From the previous section, you should be able to identify that the yellow system quantity is below the normal fill range. Unless the yellow system is currently operating the cargo doors, you should probably contact maintenance for assistance. The yellow system has now been serviced and we're ready to start the engines. The engine page would normally be displayed during engine start, but for training purposes, we've displayed the hydraulic page to see the hydraulic indications. Go ahead and start engine two. Engine two, or the right engine, is running. Notice the normal operation of the yellow system. Also notice that the blue system electric pump activates automatically after the first engine is started. The PTU is inhibited at this point, and even though there's more than a 500 PSI difference between the green and yellow systems, it is not operating. You're probably wondering how the PTU is inhibited during engine start, and that's a great question. On the ground, the PTU is inhibited if the master switches are split, one off and one on and either of the nose wheel steering is disconnected or the parking brake is on. In other words, the system knows that you're starting or shutting down engines and the aircraft is being towed or stopped. In that case, the green system and thus the PTU are not required. The PTU is also inhibited for 40 seconds after the cargo door is operated, but more on this later in the lesson. Go ahead and start engine one and view the hydraulic page. The moment you commence the second engine start, engine one, the PTU is no longer inhibited. Sensing a pressure differential of more than 500 PSI between the green and yellow systems, the PTU automatically activates. This sequence ensures that the PTU is tested prior to each flight. An ECAM message is displayed if the PTU fails to operate during its self-test. Advance to complete the engine one start. With engine one running, the PTU deactivates and all three systems operate normally. Delay that second engine start for at least one minute after a cargo door is closed. Remember that the PTU is inhibited for 40 seconds after operation of any cargo door is complete. 
This ensures that when the yellow electric pump activates for cargo door operation, there is no chance that the PTU can pressurize the green system, which would be a safety issue for ground personnel. If a second engine start is attempted shortly after a cargo door is closed, a PTU fault may occur. This is because the PTU is inhibited and results in an unsatisfactory self-test. The PTU fault requires accomplishing a reset in accordance with procedure. Because the hydraulic system is highly automated, you should really have no reason to interact with the system for the remainder of your flight, unless a hydraulic abnormal occurs. We'll now move on to the abnormal operations section of this lesson. This section presents a sample of abnormals that could be encountered with the hydraulic system. You're in flight, everything is normal, and then this happens. The green system engine driven pump is producing low pressure. Notice that with a 500 PSI differential sense, the PTU automatically activates to pressurize the green system. Go ahead and push the master caution light to extinguish both of them. Now let's accomplish the ECAM action step by pushing the green engine one pump push button. Notice the fault light assists you in finding it. The green system engine driven pump is now depicted as off on the hydraulic page and the action step is no longer displayed. Now let's push either clear key on the ECAM control panel to clear the message from the EWD. As you can see this clears the message and also displays the status page. The status page displays the green system engine driven pump as the only inoperative system. You now clear the status page and then consult the FCOM for follow up information. We will end the scenario at this point. A failure of the yellow system engine driven pump would have a similar outcome. A failure of the blue system electric pump has more significant consequences as you are about to see. A blue electric pump overheat has been detected. We have extinguished the master caution lights for you. Let's accomplish the ECAM action step by pushing the blue electric pump push button after lifting the guard. This action shuts down the blue system. Notice that the action step is removed and has been replaced by a box primary failure message indicating the loss of the blue system. The box indicates that the primary failure affects secondary systems. The affected secondary system is displayed on the right side of the EWD. In this example, the flight control system is affected by the blue system failure. Go ahead and push either clear key to clear the message. The failure message is removed from the EWD and the flight control page is displayed to show the impact of the loss of the blue system on the flight controls. Because of the redundant design of the flight control system, only spoiler pair 3 is rendered inoperative. Although the blue jacks are lost for the ailerons, elevators, and rudder, these flight control surfaces remain operational powered by other hydraulic systems. Push on either clear key to clear the flight control page and display the status page. The status page lists the items lost due to the loss of the blue system. It also provides approach procedures and indicates that the slats extend slowly now due to the fact that they're being powered by only one hydraulic system. It would also be necessary to apply a landing distance multiplier because two spoiler panels are inoperative. The fault light in the blue electric pump push button is still illuminated. The status page indicates that if blue overheat out, the blue electric pump push button may be returned to auto. The overheat condition can be monitored using the fault light. If the fault light extinguishes, the overheat condition no longer exists. Go ahead and clear the status page, then consult the FCOM for follow-up information. We will end the scenario at this point. As mentioned earlier, there are three types of reservoir problems. Low fluid level, low air pressure, and overheat. In all three types, the eventual result is shutting down the system with the problem. A low air pressure situation was briefly described earlier in this lesson. Next, we will discuss a green reservoir low level. The green reservoir has a low fluid level. We have extinguished the master caution lights for you, and the PTU is activated to pressurize the green system. However, the ECAM requires that the green system pressure sources be deactivated, including the PTU. Let's push the PTU push button on the hydraulic panel to accomplish the first ECAM action step. The PTU has been shut down, the fault light extinguished in the PTU push button, and green system pressure has dropped to zero. 
Let's push the engine one pump push button on the hydraulic panel to accomplish the next ECAM action step. The pump is now shut off and the loss of the green system is now reflected as a box primary failure on the EWD. Secondary failure messages indicating that the flight controls and landing gear are also impacted by the primary failure. With all action steps complete, go ahead and push either clear key to clear the message and view the flight control page. Now you can see that on the flight control page, two sets of spoilers are lost. Because of the system redundancy, all other flight control surfaces remain operational. Now go ahead and push a clear key to view the wheel page. Now we can see that the auto brakes are inoperative. More on that in the landing gear and brakes lesson, but go ahead and push a clear key again to view the status page. Now we have an extensive list of various items that are no longer operational because of the loss of the green system. You also see approach procedures associated with this failure. They include the fact that you will be required to gravity extend the landing gear. Since both slats and flaps use green system pressure and pressure from another hydraulic system to operate, they will both extend at approximately half their normal speed. Go ahead and clear the status page. Now you would refer to the FCOM for additional information, but we will terminate this scenario at this point. Dual hydraulic system failures are extremely rare and subject to many variables which make a complete demonstration of such an abnormal and practical during this presentation. What follows is a single example of a dual failure showing the initial warnings, indications, and systems affected. Here we return to a previous scenario where the green was shut down because of a low fluid level. Continue to see what happens if a second system fails. A low fluid level has now been detected in the yellow system. You are alerted to this dual hydraulic system failure by flashing master warn lights and a continuous repetitive chime. We have already canceled both of them for you. Let's accomplish the first ECAM action step by pushing the yellow engine 2 pump push button on the hydraulic panel. This is as far as we will go with the procedures, but let's take a closer look at the failure message on the EWD. The serious implications of a dual hydraulic system failure are indicated by a red box primary failure message and a red land ASAP memo on the right side of the EWD. This abnormal has a significant impact on the flight control system as indicated by the remaining failure messages and action steps. You also see that the flight control and wheel system pages will be viewed as you clear through this abnormal. Now let's take a look at what the status page will look like when you clear to it. A whole laundry list of inoperative components are displayed on the right side. Some of the more significant items include both reversers, the flaps, both autopilots, anti-skid, nose wheel steering, and the ability to extend and retract the landing gear normally. All of this has a significant impact on the approach, including landing flaps 3, increasing the approach speed, applying a significant landing distance multiplier, flying the aircraft in direct law with the gear and its gravity extended, and braking the aircraft using the alternate system supplied by a special brake accumulator. Here's an example of what the status page will look like with the blue and yellow system failure. Of special note is the requirement to gravity extend the landing gear. Even though the green system is still working, the ECAM directs you to gravity extend the gear to avoid putting a heavy load on the single remaining hydraulic system. Remember, you must have at least one functioning hydraulic system to control the aircraft. This completes the abnormal operation section of this lesson. Let's take a look at some of the hydraulic system differences. The ECAM pages are virtually identical on all aircraft. There are only minor differences in the location of items. However, there is one big difference. On all A319s and some A321s, the nose wheel steering, NWS, is powered by the yellow hydraulic system. On some A321s, the nose wheel steering is powered by the green hydraulic system. Nose wheel steering is covered in the landing gear and brakes lesson. Therefore, this concludes differences section.